transcendental transformation, the place where spirituality and transformation unite. Host Miss Raina imparts truth so that you can break through your limiting beliefs and evolve into a deeper consciousness. As you go about your day, remember, before every breakthrough, there is a breakdown. And now, let's start the show. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Transcendental Transformation. I'm your host, Miss Raina, and today is Tuesday, October 12, 2021. As always, we're coming live from the Sirius Star System Studios right here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I hope all is well with everybody. So, yes, we are back. I am so excited. I really am. I, I, you guys have no clue how excited I am. I, uh, I actually got emotional about this just a few minutes ago. I hope the tears aren't still, but... You know, it's been quite the journey the last couple of years for me, and uh, it's really, really kicked in uh, some, some deep lessons and implemented some deep lessons into my life and really helped me understand kind of like where things are headed and what's going on right now. And to be honest with you, uh, you know, I just, it's season eight. I'm excited. I, I, you know, I knew I'd get back there and I just, I'm just excited. If you can't tell, I'm so excited. I missed you guys. I really have. I I missed all my friends out there and, uh, you know, we're going to be back. I don't know if we're going to do a show each and every week. We're going to try to. But again, sometimes my health isn't always the, uh, the best still. It's gotten a lot better. It has. It really has. And I'm out doing stuff. I'm, hey, I'm back here at the show, right? I'm, I'm back in your living room or car or wherever you have me. And uh, yeah, it's just all good stuff, people. I'm so excited. But uh, I do want to wish a very happy birthday to my dear friend Stacy, uh, who turned 65 today. <laughs> She's going to kill me for that one, but uh, no, I think she's really 53, but uh, I thought I'd make a joke. But anyway, Stacy, happy birthday. I love you, girl, and I'm so glad you're in my life, and uh, I hope we can celebrate many more birthdays together. It's October, and I am excited because this is one of my favorite months. I, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love uh, this this month. I you know everything's spooky, everything's scary. I watch all the scary movies. I do. Uh, I'm part of a Discord channel uh, that uh, you know a group, uh, a gaming group, and I host movie night every night, scary movies, and I absolutely love it. Uh, it goes by fast. Can you believe that 2021 is almost over? I I know for probably some of you it may have gone slow, and even being ill, it seemed like at times it was going by so slow, but uh, it went by fast didn't it? I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just my perception. Maybe it's just my reality, but it just keeps going by faster and faster. But what are you guys doing? I was supposed to go to a camping trip this uh, next week, actually, uh, for FPG. And uh, I guess we're going to cancel that because there's just so many things that are going on. Caleb is not with us tonight because he had some family uh, business going on. But uh, but yeah, we were going to go camping and just uh, really get away because I haven't been camping in a long time. And I just wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, I get back into the old stuff. But, you know, I just didn't want to push it yet. So let me know what you guys are doing. And uh, yeah, we'll talk. Email me. You know, I missed you guys. I, I know I've been gone, but I miss you guys. I still got a few of your emails that I have to respond to. I know it's my fault. I just, you know, my health had to come first. So, all right, guys. Anyways, we are live on, uh, uh, well, Facebook is acting up for some reason. It's not accepting my restream. So I have to go fix that after this. But we are live right now, usually on Facebook, but YouTube, Twitter, t- uh, Twitch, and LinkedIn. Uh, Periscope is now Twitter. So if you guys have a Twitter account, go to Twitter. Uh, find me at, at uh, the real Miss Raina or real Miss Raina and, um, and then add me and then you guys can watch the stream there too. But as always, there will always be replays on Facebook and all that stuff, but I heart Spotify, our website, soul and spirit guide, uh, dot com, uh, iTunes, Google, Stitchers, Podboy, all these different ones. If you if you're not familiar with them, go on our uh, Facebook page, Transcendental Transformation, and uh, we have every link listed there for you guys. Okay. So let's get into today's show because today's show is a very important show. It is a show that uh, I decided to do because originally we had something scheduled. Oh, by the way, oh my God, I almost forgot. It is our 200th 
episode today. <laughs> uh, can you tell I'm excited, guys? I really am. I, I am so excited to be back that I'm forgetting everything. Luckily, my notes just said, hey, reminder, 200 episodes. <laughs> But yes, it is our 200th episode. We started eight years, uh, ten years ago, actually, and because of the uh, the car accident when I got hit by the bike and then this illness, we've uh, stretched out eight shows into almost nine nine and a half years. But uh, but yeah, we started back in 2012 and uh, of this month, December 15th. And uh, we have not looked back. And it's because of all of you that have made this show so very special. And believe me, I, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much for listening, writing me, helping me, helping be a part of the show. Because of you is the reason why I do this show. And I will continue to do this show, even if there's one person that only watches the show that really enjoys it, which I know we're growing again. And uh, but I'm still here for you guys. So, but anyways. This show is so important, and I really got, I really, really stressed. I really want you guys to listen to this show because I'm going to talk about my life, especially my experiences. I'm going to talk about one of my friends, uh, Stacy's, uh, who went through this. And there are so many people who have gone through this situation that have, that are sick that have gone to the doctors, have taken every blood test, have gone, and all the doctors say, well, I don't know what's going on. I have no clue, but you seem fine. All the tests came back, so I don't know. And they just pass you along from doctor to doctor until they think you're crazy. And then no one wants to help you because they can't find anything. And there are some wonderful doctors out there, yes. And I thank you guys for those of you that are wonderful. But there are some very, very horrible doctors out there that just don't care, that just do the, the standard testing and, if, and they do the amount of work based on if they're going to get paid, insurance. And I have run into several of these doctors during my time of being ill. And it's disheartening for you guys. I know that. It really is disheartening because six years ago, I started getting sick. And I was very healthy. You guys know the way I used to be if you guys were listening to the show. I was fit. I used to play softball and ba uh, not baseball, football and all those different things. I used to swim. I used to be very fit. I used to ride my bike 30 miles, then go to the gym for two hours. And I, was, I felt unstoppable. But we're not unstoppable, are we? Only the mind and the will of who we are is unstoppable. But as far as the physical limitations of our body, yes, we do have limitations. And that is one of the things that we have to understand. Because as strong as invincible as we may feel or as much as we put, and you guys know that I used to eat healthy. I was always into my, my alternative medicine. I always did whatever I did. But sometimes that still isn't even enough because... There are illnesses like infectious diseases that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about some of the main ones today later in the show. But there are ones that can take us and not even know about it and slowly over time start to deteriorate our body and really start to cause problems. And six years ago, this happened to me. All of a sudden, I started gaining weight. And I gained a little bit of weight after the car accident when I got ran over by the truck because, hey, I wasn't working out all the time. So I gained a little bit of weight, but I started to go back and I realized that something changed. Something happened to me a few years later. Like I was getting strong again. I was moving and all of a sudden one day I just started gaining weight. My energy, I was running with the football one time. I, I made an interception during a game and I was running during a football and in the middle of the run, my energy just dropped and I never recovered. And I remembered this because I was sitting there and I was like, what the hell happened to me? Like, what happened? Like, what was that about? Like, I felt it and I could never run as fast as I did. And it was the most crazy thing. And every day after that, I would wake up fatigued. I would wake up tired uh, and, and not just fatigued, but exhausted. Like it slowly started to get like at first it was fatigue and I was just had a general tiredness. And then as time went by, I was getting I was becoming more tired and more tired. And no matter how much sleep I had. I just couldn't get enough sleep and I couldn't get enough energy. And I thought maybe it was the adrenals, maybe it was, you know, stomach, maybe it was kidney, you know, all these different things in Chinese medicine. And I, so I started supplementing with all these things and I noticed that nothing was changing. My mood, however, though, was changing. I was becoming grumpy all the time. I was going up and down and, and, and dealing with things on a harsher basis. And yes, I know I used to deal with bipolar and everything, but this was bringing out a different side of me. 
and I was cranky all the time. I was moody. Just even, just even, even when I was happy, I was cranky. Like little things that never used to bother me bothered me. I started becoming more aggravated in the car, and just I started noticing all these little changes. And during my sports, I realized that I would be playing softball and all of a sudden I'd start missing easy fly balls. I would look up at the sky and I'd start looking and all of a sudden I would misjudge the ball. And I was like, and they were like, Raina, what was that about? You missed the ball. And I never missed balls. And I started noticing that the ball was blurred and I would get up to bat or I'd go for a catch in football or do something and watch TV. And I started noticing my eyes started going bad. I couldn't focus. And it was like, it started to become a problem. And so I started reaching out to my colleagues and stuff like that and started saying, Hey, you know, this is going on. I think maybe it's this and this. And we were starting to try to figure out what, what it was. And for a short time, like the, the herbal formulas helped and everything like that, but we were going after the wrong things and we had no clue. One of the major things that I noticed was before I went to bed, and this is a key thing as well, is that I started having to urinate a lot before I had to go to bed. Like during the day when I was doing my thing, had no problem. But the moment I was, like the moment I'd go lay down, all of a sudden I had to pee 15 times, 20 times before I went to bed. And it was every couple of minutes. I was like, I was like, I just, I just peed. There, there's nothing left in me. And I would have this huge urgency to urinate and I just couldn't figure it out so we tried tackling that and still nothing no matter what we did we tried we what whatever we tried it just didn't seem to work everyday things became a chore playing sports I got slower I got out of breath I remember one time I was trying to run around the bases during a tournament and I literally almost passed out by the time I got to the base and I was fast I used to run around those bases faster than anyone and things changed. And I remember I had to take myself out of that game because I was like, something's not right here. And even my, even my, the coach at the time was like, Raina, what's wrong with you? You're not running anymore. Whatever's going on, you're not running anymore. And I couldn't. I had to run to first base and be taken out all the time because I could no longer run and more gate weight gain. And like I said, everything started to affect. So if this stuff is starting to sound familiar to, your, uh, familiar to you guys, where like everyday chores, like I, I could never, like I, like I had to take energy supplements, everyday chores, like going to the hot, like going to the, the, uh, uh, the, the grocery stores or going running for errands or just cleaning, washing dishes became so much that I literally started sitting on the couch and doing nothing. And finally, it just like I started taking energy supplements like natural things like beta alanine, taurine, BCAAs, tyrosine, cordyceps, all these things that help you with anything. And it would do great for a short time, but then I'd come crashing down and feel even worse. And we couldn't, we kept scratching our heads. And so the real issue started about six months before I got really ill. And what ended up happening, as you guys know, is I was at a football tournament here in Fort Lauderdale, and I just didn't feel well. And all of a sudden, I said, time out, guys. I'm really dizzy. I remember the morning I woke up, I felt this, this, this like, drop, like this, this blood drop inside my body. It was like someone broke my blood vessels out, and all the blood drained out of my heart. I could literally feel it dump. And I just felt hollow inside and I was like, what is going on? I tried playing the game and I was so off with my throws and so slow that by halftime they took me out. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I don't know what's going on. And I tried playing as a receiver and within after a couple runs, I said, time out, guys. I need a time out. And bam, the next thing I know, a stretcher was coming for me, an ambulance, and I was gone. And my heart was racing at 120 miles an hour or 120 uh, beats per minute. And it was just, it was just insane. And so it came, all came to a head and I've tried to figure out what was wrong with me. So we, we thought that the heart was an issue because I was a big partier. And yes, there was a part of me that had a part of cardiomyopathy. Yes, because I was a big partier. I used to love to party with drugs because that was my gateway out of things. And that developed an issue. But this disease that I had exacerbated that. And so it made it harder. And it was and, and I, my digestion became horrible. And we're going to get into gluten and dairy intolerances a little in a little bit and everything. But but 
my sleep issues. And my friend who, who Stacy, who had issues as well, had a lot of this stuff, but hers was a little different. So it depends on what, what's going on. And sleep issues started to happen. I got sick all the time. I was in and out of the hospital constantly. I did every standard blood test. So if you've been sick and you've had, and you've gone to the hospitals and the doctors and they've done all the standard blood tests and they constantly come back as, okay, you're okay. And all your levels, I did everything. I went, I literally was, I had every EKG done. I had every uh, scan done. I've had ultrasounds done from head to toe. I had everything done at the hospital. I had so many blood tests, urine tests, fecal tests. I literally was the prize for tests over this, or especially over the past year. And, you know, and everyone looked at me like that. And same with my friend Stacy. Stacy was tired all the time. She had dizziness. She was forgetting. And that happened to me as well. She, uh, she one time, she even forgot to use a fork. And that was in, that's important because in her thing that was going on was more neurological, more brain. And it was, and it was sad because she started losing, and I remember her going through this, and it, she started losing, like she started having numbness in her arms and her extremities and her legs, and she started to have major migraines, and she started calling out of work. Luckily, I worked from home. And I know she lost a job or two because of it because she was always sick to the point even where me, I was on this couch right here all the time and I couldn't get up. It was a chore for me to even go to the bathroom and get to a point where like I would literally sit on a bathroom and hold on to the railing because I felt like I was going to have a heart attack and die. It would take for me to go to the bath, and that's when I, that's when I said, there's got to be something else. I could not leave the couch. I would sleep 12 hours and get there. Stacy was getting to the point where she was having all this stuff until there was, uh, until there was spinal fluid le literally leaking through the nose. And then the doctor said, well, and she actually had to tell the doctors, no, I need to be tested for something else because there's spinal fluid leaking through my nose. Well, no, that's not spinal. Yes, there is. And finally, when they they realized it was they said okay there's something bigger going on here and one of the things that I want to tell you guys is keep pushing I had to push I knew in my heart that something big was going on I knew that it wasn't going to be found on standard tests and the doctors don't tell you this stuff the doctors will not tell you because they are trained to do specific tests and if if you have insurance sure they'll do extra tests because they're going to get money if you don't like I don't guess what you're out the door because why? Because they know chances are you're not going to be able to pay it. And chances are they have to, by law, they have to treat you basically. And then after that, you're out the door. But that's what happens in our country. And it's sad because a lot of people don't have insurance or can't afford it. And for people like Stacy, who is suffering, she suffered for 10 years before they figured this out. I was luckier. I only had it for six years. And, and a lot of you people may be suffering for 10 years, five years, one year, 15 years, whatever. But when you know something's wrong and you're starting to get a lot of these symptoms because these are leading symptoms to tell you that a whole thing is going wrong. True. There are symptoms that relate to other things. Yes, absolutely. There are many symptoms that it could be heart. It could be kidneys. It could be diabetes. It could be so many things. But when all those answers are, when all those questions are answered and they say, well, you don't have diabetes, you don't have heart issues, you don't have blood clocks, you don't have this, you don't have anything. We don't know what it is. You need to push for an infectious disease doctor. You need to seek one out because this is how so many people get sick and people don't know. And the standard testing and being tested for infectious disease needs to become a standard. And this is the reason why I want to do the show today because I want to, for you guys to understand my story, my friend Stacy's story, and millions of people all over the world who have the same story who have suffered in sickness and illness and almost died because the hospitals and the doctors had no clue because the standard of testing is very limited. All right, guys, we'll be right back after these messages from the life of rain. Or no, actually, it's I am evolution. Oh, almost caught me. <laughs> the human experience is changing and consciousness is evolving into something higher than any of us could ever imagine. As we transform into more sentient beings, 
a new world of connected consciousness is taking place. Welcome to I Am Evolution, the movement in human development that transforms the human experience into a deeper consciousness through perspective and duality. Are you ready to be a part of the next stage in human evolution? Call I Am Evolution today to schedule your appointment at 561-318-0006. That's 561-318-0006. Or email us at imevolution at protonmail.com. All right, everybody, we are back. And if you're just joining us, welcome back. I missed you guys so very much. And we are talking about infectious disease. So there are... In our lives, we are taught, especially in Western medicine or Western countries, we are taught that Western medicine and pharmaceuticals is the answer, but not all the time is it the answer and not all the time do they know the answer. There are a lot of good doctors out there and to those doctors that, that actually take the time and care about their patient and it isn't about making money for the hospitals or your practice, I commend you because it is a very difficult job, but that is why it's called practicing medicine because we are practicing to understand what is going on. When it comes to those doctors that just don't care, and I have run into them even here at the hospital right next door to me, I had one doctor told me that what I'm doing is quackery and that I need to learn and understand real medicine because that's the only way it's going to help me. And he didn't care at all. Like he was one of those doctors that when I tried speaking to him, he would go, uh-huh, 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 mm, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, okay, as I'm talking to him. And I can tell that they're not really listening. And as a person who's sick, as a person who is trying to find answers, and especially because I have a, uh, a medical background, I know many of you don't, uh, that can be very demoralizing. That can be very disheartening because we don't understand like, hey, I'm coming to you for questions and you're just blowing me off. And that's why I'm doing today's show because I want to make sure that all of you have that understanding. When you're pushed off and told that you need to see a cardiologist, that you need to see uh, a different or whoever, another doctor, and you go to those doctors and you don't get the answers and you're becoming more exhausted every day, you're becoming dizzy, you're becoming numb, you're, you're having, you're developing all these things. And, and let me tell you this, guys, you will be misdiagnosed several times. I was misdiagnosed. Stacy was misdiagnosed. She was diagnosed with, with uh, rheumatoid arthritis. She was diagnosed with autoimmune disease. She was diagnosed with, uh, uh, um, uh, what was it? Uh, she was diagnosed with one other one. I can't remember in my notes. I can't even read my writing right now. But there was many times that I was misdiagnosed, she was, and you will be misdiagnosed too because unfortunately, you know, a lot of doctors, same with psychologists, they hear certain things and they're trained. Okay, if you have this, this is what it must be. But again, this is the body. This is why I got into Chinese medicine and why I love it because no, it's not always that way. You don't just fit the, 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 you know, the, the stats with the person and say, okay, let's call the day. This is what you are. Here's a pill for this. No, it doesn't work like that. And it didn't work like this with mine. You know, I have had to take Chinese medicine and for the first time in my life, I, or first time in over 20 years, yes, I am taking a Western medication. It is one pill three times a day. And, uh, and, and Stacy had to do an infusion where she had to go to the hospital. I think it was like once a day for, for like, or, or three times a week or something like that for like six months or for a while. I, I don't remember if it was six months quite, but it was a long time. And that stuff can be expensive. My my treatments are not that expensive, but the Chinese medicine, all that stuff does run up. And so, yes, it is very hard for a lot of people because I've been out of work for a while. It's been very hard. Luckily, I've had the support and I, and I owe my family, especially my mom, a big, I don't even, I can't even put it into my words. My friends and my family have been there to support. Uh, Stacy and Denise have, uh, Caleb, Leanne, Maritza, uh, they, they've all been there for me. And they've all been 
been helping me with with my life they've all been and and my mom uh, uh with financial because i'll be honest with you i i i've needed financial help with this and if you're lucky enough to have the finances to be able to deal with this or the insurance hey great i i am awesome but it, but if you guys don't yes it can be a little challenging and i hope that you're able to find the funds for it because sometimes it can get a little costly but you have to but but these things don't get better overnight because they've created this idea of chronic fatigue, rapid heart rate, d uh, d dizziness, all this stuff. You know, this stuff happens like mine progressed and grew over six years. It's not going to be fixed overnight. Like I'm almost at the I'm finishing up at the five month mark and I probably still have another maybe maybe three, four months left, if that. They said six months, but honestly, with my intuition and with my knowledge, I don't think I'm going to be fully back to normal in six months. I just don't see it. Like, if I was back walking around doing things like normal, I could say, okay, maybe. But I still have my days where I'm doing normal stuff, and there's still days where I'm kind of relaxing because I'm too tired and I'm having, you know, hard time breathing and stuff like that and different things. It goes up and down. Things don't go. Mine was viral. Mine, um, what ended up happening is I contract like I had an illness and I got and my immune system fought it it got caught in a loop fighting an illness once after it defeated it, it kept thinking it was there it created this whole autoimmune disorder uh, and then all of a sudden it allowed it allowed uh, the, uh, the the herpes virus inside because we all have we've had chicken pox we have herpes and we're going to get into that in a little bit uh, we've all had herpes uh, we all have herpes uh, like 99.9% .9 of the world has a form of herpes one way or the other cold or uh, if you've had it through sexual transmission, if you've had it through, uh, through chicken pox, whatever. So it allowed that, that form of herpes in my body to run rampant and destroy my body, which attacked my heart, which had a bit of my, uh, uh, cardiomyopathy. It allowed my, it, it destroyed, my indige destroyed my digestion and it created all these new problems. And now I'm gluten intolerant, I'm dairy intolerant. I really didn't eat a lot of dairy, but I did eat gluten, things with gluten. I'm intolerant to eggs now, and I used to love eggs. And so all these issues start happening. And, with, and, and, and so I want you guys to realize that this, I want you to take a good look at everything and realize what is going on. So herpes is one of the most common forms of infectious diseases. We don't think it is, but it is. There are actually over 100 types of herpes. But as far as humans go involved, there are eight major types that affect herpes. I'm not going to go over them, but the most common are herpes simplex one and two. That is the cold sores. That is the genital herpes that we know of. Okay. And, and they, they usually a lot of times when you get herpes, we usually within a two to 20 day period is when you first start showing symptoms. A lot of times there are triggers for oral herpes and that, and that is usually a a cold, like if you get a cold or, or that, and a lot of times sunlight. They say for genital herpes that there's no proof. And before I get into this, I want to say one more thing. When I, there is so much manipulation going on with our internet now that everything is, all the medical sources are controlled by the government now. And I know this is going to sound a little like conspiracy theories, but it's true. And I want to tell you guys that finding true information out there is going to be very, very difficult for you because everything is controlled now by the CDC and the U.S. government. And so even if you use a VPN and you try to find different medical stuff, everything, especially if you're using Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever you use for your search engine, Everything is controlled by the CDC. So that means like the first page or two are all going to be government funded medical stuff that want to tell you what they want you to know. So it doesn't mean that it's going to be truthful. It's what they want you to know. So you're going to see a lot of the same websites saying a lot of the same things. You got to go past that. If you want to know the truth and you want to find out true information, yes, you have to use a VPN to search in other countries. And yes, you have to go more than the first page or two of listings because those are all going to be government funded. And if you don't believe me, when we were doing the research for this show alone, 
no matter what it was no matter what we looked up everything popped up with the cdc or the same uh government funded pages and they were all said the same information and i know in my medical uh background i know that plot there's a lot more and not all of what they said was entirely true it is manipulated so yes it can be disheartening but seek the answers and reach out to doctors and reach out to many of them as you can all over the world all over the country wherever you need to and push past the first few pages do what you have to do and don't just take the first few things you see because my point to this is they say genital herpes has no trigger but it does and one of the triggers is is eating acidic foods i know people that have herpes cold sores genital herpes or any type and they eat junky food. I know people that have eczema and the moment you create an acidic environment in your body, this will trigger uh, the infectious disease you have to exacerbate. This will trigger the, that, that herpes to pop out and you to show symptoms, you to have those, those red sores or whatever is going on. So yes, your diet is so important and we're gonna get into uh, the um, the uh, the gluten intolerance and everything uh, that we do, but like I said, chicken pox is very well known. It's a form of herpes. It's one of the things that we're we're done with. But one of the things that people don't understand is the is mono, which is herpes four, and herpes four, as we might know the test by the Epstein Barr test, it's called the kissing virus, and a lot of people think nothing of it, but believe it or not, herpes can be a very dangerous and deadly virus in us. We may think, oh yeah, okay, we pop a few valcyclovirs every once in a while, or we break out in shingles or something like that. And hey, okay, it comes and it goes. Oh yeah, and 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 we always say, oh yeah, I just have a cold sore, and people touch their cold sore, then touch someone else's hand, transmute it, or drink off someone's glass, and then they drink off it, transmute. It. But this is highly, highly transmittable. And a lot of times, I am a big person. When, when people around me have cold sores, I make sure I don't touch anything around them. And if they've touched something, I wipe it. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little neurotic that way, but... But it is true. But this affects 90% of Americans. And one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, symptoms that herpes has is fatigue, especially extreme fatigue, sore throat, fever, uh, swollen lymph nodes, headaches, uh, and, uh, lifelong infections that can be asymptomatic. Uh, they can also have diarrhea, rashes, things like that. Okay, So we have to realize that there's a lot of things that we may not understand that can contribute to these type of uh, uh, these things. Uh, SARS is another one. Star SARS is severe acute respiratory syndrome. I know we've heard about it, especially in 2003. If you're old like me or getting older like me, uh, you know, it was reported. Remember the big scare when everybody in Asia was like, oh, SARS is going around. And it, uh, it, f it affected over 8,000 people worldwide. And I think there was like a close to 700 deaths. But this was an exposure from a lab. And this people had a lot of severe symptoms of high fever, chills, headaches, uh, general discomfort, body aches. When I got sick, especially with St when Stacey got sick as well, I noticed that our body ached all the time. And we got diagnosed, both of us got diagnosed as fibromyalgia. A lot of people are getting diagnosed as fibromyalgia. And yes, you may have it. Yes, 100% you may have it. But also, you may not. You may have something going on that resembles fibromyalgia. The doctors don't always know. Just because they put on a white lab coat and they have knowledge, and they may have a, not, a lot of knowledge. Hey, I have a lot of knowledge, but that doesn't mean I know everything. That doesn't mean they know everything. And, and to sit there and think that we do, well, that's just foolish. This is why we are here to learn. This is, this is a great, believe it or not, this is a great experience for me. Even though it was really hard for me and I felt like I was an inch from death for the past two years, I honestly am thankful for it because I learned so much about myself, more medicine than I ever thought possible. A lot of the things I was taught in school were implemented. A lot of ideas clicked for me and a lot of things that I've learned that I didn't know all of a sudden were taught to me. And so I learned a lot through this experience. And even though you don't feel well, even though you may be having these symptoms and, and things like that, you may be learning a lot 
about things that you may be able to help others. I know for a fact that I'm going to be able to help others in, my, in, in the long run once I'm back healthy. But again, I had to go through this process of all the aggravation of being rejected by doctors, being told I was crazy, being told that there's nothing wrong with me, it's, it's psychosomatic, and, and, and having these ideas where I have to, uh, that, that just kind of being pushed out the door, especially once they found out I had no insurance. And, and it's sad because, you know, when you're sick, you don't feel well. And we're told to go to the doctors. We're told to do this stuff. And that's why I'm telling you, seek out other people. Seek out other things. Because I know for a fact, especially up in Connecticut, I had a friend who contracted Lyme disease. And if you don't know what Lyme disease is, it's a bacterial infection. And they basically, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a corkscrew shape to bacterium and stuff like that. And basically, it's mostly from deer ticks or uh, back-legged ticks. And a lot of times, you don't feel that you're getting bit. I know my friend contracted Lyme disease. And when we were younger, we used to tease him because he was somewhat of a hypochondriac. He would always have, you know, he was the boy who caught, cried wolf a lot, said he was sick when he wasn't. But the one time he actually did, did we didn't believe him. And he was saying, well, you know what? I'm having all these, th I'm ha you know, I'm tired all the time. I'm having all these issues. You know, I don't feel well. He was constantly calling off work. And we were like, okay. And, that, and a lot of doctors he went to, nobody said anything. Finally, after, after about a year of finally feeling sick, someone suggested, hey, why don't you go see this doctor? He's an infectious disease doctor. And they, t they looked for a thing and they found a, a, a bite, I think, or a mark where a bite happened. And they said, that's a tick, that's a, uh, a bite from a tick. And somehow the scar or something was still there. And they did a test and sure enough, he had Lyme disease. And he was sick for almost two years, throwing up all the time, feeling very sick, not being able to go to work. We didn't believe him. We teased him even because, you know, what I just said. And that, and, and sadly, t uh, Lyme disease affects over oh, close to, you know, uh, uh, close to 500,000. I think it's like 476,000 people are diagnosed every year in the U.S. alone. And so many people are misdiagnosed. And, and a lot of people believe that it's an actual higher number. But a lot of, of us are going out, especially in the summertime. All it takes is one time tiny little tick, a baby tick to bite us that is carrying the, the infection and boom, we have it. It's that simple. We could be sand, we can be outside, get bit by a bug, get bit by something that has something and boom, we have an infectious disease. And that's how simple it is. So, so you know, it, it, it's sad, but there are so many ways. I don't want to scare people, but there are so many ways for us to, to get infected by things to become sick. That's why it's very important for us to take care of ourselves. I truly believe if I wasn't as healthy as I was and exercised all the time and, and ate healthy all the time, I truly believe that this would have been the downfall for me. I really believe that because I was that close to, to, to dying. And, and it, uh, my heart was going, uh, I was constantly having a heart rate of like, uh, it was super high. My blood pressure was going up and down. I was so dizzy. I couldn't even get up to use the bathroom. That's how bad it was. And my heart was pounding at between 100 and uh, 120 something, 130 beats per minute constantly. I was sweating for no reason. I couldn't eat anything. And if I wouldn't have had the money or the knowledge or anything and, and that and the intuition to say, hey, go check an infectious disease doctor, I would I guarantee you I would have I would have died on that couch. So my friend, like I said, had starry. And Starry is also another one from ticks. It's, it's usually the Lone Star tick, I believe they talk, they talk and it's usually from the Southern reason, uh, which I believe that's the reason why they call it that. But, uh, but usually it's a, you start developing like a circular or an elliptical type of rash on you. And some of the common symptoms are fe like right away are fever, headaches, stiff neck, muscle joint. And again, that's the reason why they usually chalk it up to, oh, you have a cold or flu or you you know, you have some type of influenza virus or, you know, you have fibromyalgia, you, you're, you're sick. And that's usually what they'll tell you at first. Oh, you probably have a common cold. Just rest and do something because that's how it starts out. But 
the progression is what's telling you. When you start to feel the extreme exhaustion, when you start to have like maybe numbness or you start to feel body aches at a severe thing, when you start, when your heart rate changes, uh, when your digestion changes, it can be really, really uh, uh, deep signs that this uh, infectious disease is progressing. All right, guys, we're going to take a, a break and we'll be right back after these messages from I Am Evolution. The human experience is changing. And consciousness is evolving into something higher than any of us could ever imagine. As we transform into more sentient beings, a new world of connected consciousness is taking place. Welcome to I Am Evolution, the movement in human development that transforms the human experience into a deeper consciousness through perspective and duality. Are you ready to be a part of the next stage in human evolution? Call I Am Evolution today to schedule your appointment at 561-318-0006. That's 561-318-0006. Or email us at imevolution at protonmail.com. All right, everybody, we are back. And if you're just joining us, we are talking about all the signs and all the sign and symptoms of, of having an infectious disease. And yes, a lot of it sounds common. And yes, a lot of it can be common things. I don't want to get your head rattled. I don't want you to start thinking, oh, I have these signs and symptoms. I must have an infectious disease. No, that's not always true. I'm saying if this is starting to happen where, you, where you're starting to become ill for a long time, and you start noticing that every day of things and things start changing your digestion, your stool, your bowel movements, your vision, your, you know, you start having numbness, you start having just everything starts changing one day and it just keeps getting worse and worse. And you go to the doctors, they do tests, they do all the, the basic tests, the basic blood work, the basic urine test, and they check you for, especially right now for COVID and everything and everything comes back peachy dory then I suggest to you, don't waste any time. Find an infectious disease doctor. They're all over, believe it or not. They are. And that, but you do, you're not told that because, of, because you know, we don't think about that stuff. And, and a lot of times people aren't, aren't shown that. But they're all over. And find an infectious disease test. Say, hey, you know what? I've been sick for a while. All of my tests are coming back. And they'll, te they'll do a standard test. Like I spent, uh, I think, about $1,200 in standard testing. And luckily for me, my testing came back. My, my immune system was so messed up that when my testing came back, uh, my my antibodies your normal antibodies in your body are supposed to be between are supposed to be between 0 and 19 my levels were 400 400 <laughs> <laughs> that is insane. And my IgG test uh, came back and it was insane amount too. And and it showed that my all, my immune system was attacking itself and my the herpes virus from the chicken pox was running rampant in my body then all of a sudden it created a a you know the autoimmune disease created imbalances and 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 intolerances to food and i was eating thinking i was still eating healthy because i love certain things that are healthy and i could no longer eat it and it was creating more of a problem my stomach was so distended people that by before this when it all came to a head my stomach was bloated where I looked like I was probably about six months pregnant. I mean, I kind of look like that now a little bit. I've lost some weight. I have, but uh, especially once I became gluten free and I, and I made sure that there was no dairy. I mean, I wasn't a big dairy fan either. Once in a blue moon on like on a pizza or something, but I, when I cut out gluten, everything like so many digestion issues resolved itself. And we're going to get into that in a second. But, you know, you have things like salmonella. We have salmonella poisoning all the time. Uh, it attacks the liver, intestinal tract, things like that. You can get it from birds and animals. Uh, you can get it by uh, uh, contaminated food. And there's over 4,000 reports every year. Uh, you can get uh, staph, like a staphylococcus, uh, you know, but we know uh, staph infections and that, and those are very deadly. Those, we know that a lot of times, you know, those will take it. That's a bacteria found underneath human skin, uh, nose, armpit, groin, things like that. Uh, it makes you very, very sick. And a lot of times people uh, die from that. Um, 
sometimes you can get, uh, uh, you know, if you ever have any inflammation uh, in the body, that is a huge sign, especially pockets of pus or enlargements, uh, things that are uh, lymph nodes and, and swollen. Those are huge signs that something that's going on. So if you start seeing that stuff, you know, let like say something, go to the doctors because a lot of times we'll say, oh, it's just a rash maybe. And maybe it goes away because believe it or not, I used to get rashes underneath my armpits and around my, my butt area all the time. And I always just thought, because I was playing sports, I thought they were rashes from bacteria from, even though I would shower, I thought it was from my material playing in tournaments all the time, just sitting there and sweat for eight hours a day. And that's what I thought. So I never thought anything of it. And they would go away. I would treat it. They would go away. But I realized now looking back on it, that that was my body saying, hey, there's something else going on. And so I want you guys to understand that there are many signs and symptoms. And of course, you know, you should always seek your 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 uh, medical uh, professional advice and stuff. But this is why I'm telling you this stuff. So there are so many different things. There's Hep C. There's there's arboviruses. Uh, there's there's so many different things. There uh, that that the, there's meningitis. There's so many different things that could be. And I'm not going to list everything because I really want to get into some of the other signs and symptoms and and uh, being lactose and dairy intolerant, which is a huge thing. But I I really suggest that if you're sick like I said, and you've had all the tests and you're getting no answers, go see that. Uh, some of the other c uncommon uh, signs and symptoms, like I said, chills and, uh, chills and fever, change in your cough. If you start, like I used to have a lot of phlegm in my, uh, and that was due to the gluten intolerance and dairy intolerance. Whenever I ate gluten and I didn't even realize, or eggs, I would get a lot of phlegm in my throat and I'd start coughing up and I didn't put two and two together. Even as, 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 as much medical knowledge as I have, sometimes still, you know, we're human. We don't know everything. We don't realize what we're doing and sometimes we don't realize the signs and symptoms. So if you're getting phlegm, like I said, I got shortness of breath. Everyday things like I'd go out to the mailbox and feel like I'm going to pass out. Uh, nasal, uh, nasal congestion, stiff pain, uh, painful urination. Those are some uncommon signs. So make sure that you're aware of this. All right, guys. So the last thing that I'm going to say is I, let's talk about food intolerance because this is big. And, and, and honestly, the reason why this is really big and the reason why I really want to talk to you guys about this is because food intolerance, especially to dairy and gluten, are becoming so much in our society today, especially here in America. And why do I say that? I say that because everything in America is altered now. Everything is GMO they, or hormones or, or, you know, they do something to alter the food or they put, they put something in it to make it better. Oh, now it comes with extra calcium. Now it comes with extra probiotics. They, it comes with extra this and that. Our food is not meant to be altered, people. I don't care how many scientists, because most of the time, like I used to be a big fan of Neil deGrasse Tyson because I love science. I'm a big nerd. And when he sold out and to say that GMOs are healthy for you, I lost total respect for that because no GMOs are not healthy for you. It is not life is made. Nature is made perfect. Everything in the universe is perfect except the human existence. We think that we have to make everything bigger, better and better. And GMOing things, modif genetically modifying our food, it's like putting gas water, uh, it's like putting water in your gasoline and, ex and, and kind of like fake oil in your car and expecting your car to run. Yeah, it may run. It may run okay, but it's not going to run properly. And that's the same with our bodies. And so we are becoming a society who eats nothing but nothing but uh, uh, nothing but dairy. We eat nothing but uh, any, any we eat nothing but gluten. We eat nothing but wheats and high starches and high everything, high fats, high processed meats, high everything. And we and men, you guys think because you're men that you need to eat meat. No, that is false. You don't. And we do not have the proper enzymes to digest dairy or meat. It is true. That's why it takes several hours for meat to digest. Vegetables are digested from, you know, anywhere from, a f uh, from you know, 10 minutes to 20 minutes. Maybe if it's a really uncooked vegetable and it's a hard vegetable, maybe 30 minutes. Meat, meat 
takes over several hours. Why? Because our body is like, what are we to do with this? And the first thing that doctors tell you to cut out when you're, when you're having heart issues or any type of health issues is what? Meat and dairy. If it's so good for us, then why do doctors tell you to cut it out? Think about that, okay? So dairy or lactose or casein are the proteins, okay, and the enzymes. So, so you know, when, when, people become, when people become lactose intolerant, it is the lactase that they are actually intolerant to, which is an enzyme, and that is slowly broken down uh, into the body. Uh, it is present in milk. It is present in some sugars, even some vegetables, even, even honey, different things like that you know, can be processed, can be changed and stuff. And a lot of our food, believe it or not, has gluten in it or has grains added to it or things added to it. If you ever look at the diet, like if you ever go and look at something, you think, oh, I'm going to eat some French fries from McDonald's. Well, there's 15 ingredients in French fries. Why is it not just potatoes and salt? Or sea salt, it should be never. It should never just be table salt. But, but why? There's 15 different ingredients. Why is it changed? because they are trying to stretch out the potato. They're trying to make it. They're trying to enlarge the potato, make more, and so they're adding products. They're trying to make it so your body craves certain things, so you come back and you eat it more. That's what they're doing. And over time, our body can't do it. And so when we start to become, our bodies, like I said, do not have the enzymes to break down dairy. That's why whole milk, like, like regular, like um, uh, non-processed milk, like raw milk is actually healthier for us than even we're not supposed to be drinking milk period especially from cow the only milk we're supposed to be drinking is breast milk that's it that's it and so the only thing that we have to have is that but dairy if we're going to eat raw milk or if we're going to drink raw milk that has the probiotics and the things in there that actually help us digest it and that's why it's illegal is because you know once in a while someone might get sick from it because they because it maybe it's not processed right but when raw milk uh it, when we process milk compared to raw milk that is when it changes in our body and we are not able to do that we have spasm if you drink milk and you have spasms or digestive issues and you have stomach aches, bloating, if, if you have diarrhea or gas, especially gas right away, when after you eat anything gluten or dairy or any type of food, more than likely you're intolerant to it. A gas and digestive bloating is the, one of the key signs to any intolerance. Gluten is a lot of times wheat, rye, barley. Those are the most popular. It's a protein found in grains, okay? And this can create digestive digestion. I'm going to say this because I know we only have a couple minutes. If you're not gluten intolerant, don't go on a gluten diet. I have been at Whole Foods and have told people this. Oh, well, yeah, I'm going on gluten. Oh, do you see gluten bread? Yeah, it's right here. Are you gluten intolerant? No, but I'm just going to go in on a gluten-free diet. No, it doesn't work like that. If you're not gluten intolerant, you need gluten in your body for certain things just not a lot of it you don't have to go crazy with it but if you are gluten and if, if you're gluten intolerant then yes you have to have uh gluten free stuff because it will create a lot of things when i stopped uh when I stopped having gluten-free, uh, when I became gluten-free, my digestive issues cleared up. My brain fog, because I'm sure you guys remember when I was having brain issues and I was stuttering a lot, that was a lot due to my gluten intolerance. And so remember how I would stutter? Uh, 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 yes, it was part of my channel too, but a lot of it was because of the gluten intolerance. I had headaches. My joints were achy because of the inflammation. Remember, dairy creates inflammation in the body. The gluten, if you're intolerant, and even sometimes when you're not will create uh, inflammation in the body. So you will have joint pain, you will have fatigue, that will cause you to have depression, you may have anxiety. I know when I have gluten, my heart rate speeds up. When I have, when I cut out gluten, my heart rate dropped a lot. It was like, boom, it dropped like 20, 20 points of speed just by cutting out gluten. So these are the things. So yes, it is hard. When I first became gluten intolerant and, and dairy intolerant, well, dairy wasn't such a big thing, but I was like, what am I supposed to eat? Everything has gluten. Everything that is, is either made with breading or, uh, or, or something, or dairy or something. 
But you know what? There is a lot of food out there to eat. And I belong to a lot of gluten and dairy-free things. And people tell you recipes. People tell you workaround things. And instead of adding eggs, you add olive oil. And, and, and now there's, there, there's just plant-based things like just eggs that make a plant-based uh, a substitute to eggs that taste just like eggs. And uh, there's, so, there's vegan mayonnaise out there that tastes just like, uh, like I'm a big fan of just products and uh, like J-U-S-T. And, uh, and, and I am a huge fan, and, and it tastes just like mayonnaise. So there are a lot of things you can have. Just because you're gluten intolerant or dairy intolerant or become sick in any way doesn't mean your life is over. doesn't mean you don't have this. But a lot of times you're going to find this, this to be a problem. Artificial flavorings, preservatives, that aren't that, uh, there's things that are in there. You know, you're you're going you're gonna to see a lot of issues with it. So becoming more natural, going back to what we're originally taught, our bodies are showing, hey, we are a society that is sick. We are a society that doesn't have the knowledge and are getting away from what nature intended to us. Because remember, we are a part of this earth. We are. We are not separate. We are not special. This earth is more powerful than us. It gave us life and it will take away our, our lives if we do not become balanced with it. We must come back to what we know best, which is our bodies, our mind, and, and the earth and the universe and be able to understand and become in harmony with it. All, when you're sick, it's because you are not in harmony with your ideas, your lifestyle, and everything. So I just wanted to go over it. I know we're out of time. But guys, I really want to go. I really wanted to go over it. I know maybe this show was a little slow. I know I kind of tone, had a, my tone down a little bit. But I really want to stress to you guys how important this is. I was sick for six years, and I could have lost my life. My friend Stacy was sick for ten years. She would have lost her life. There are so many people that don't get diagnosed with the proper stuff and lose their lives and, and have issues and are sick for a long time and may never change again because they're not getting diagnosed with the same thing don't stand for just taking pills find the answers go to different doctors seek out an infectious disease doctor if this stuff sounds like you okay all right guys well that's our show for today i'm sorry about facebook not working properly but we'll get it back for next week uh just remember to follow us on our facebook at facebook.com forward slash transcendental transformation our youtube is the same and visit our website soul and spirit guide.com and remember to sign up to our for our newsletter to receive special hidden shows vip access to the website and special guest offers when we have it email me at transcendental transformations uh, at gmail.com if you guys have any questions and if you enjoy Enjoy this show or any of our past shows P guys please share the show P let people know about it. that's the only way we're going to grow and uh, and get the knowledge and information out and always remember to believe in yourself and it's not our abilities our talents that make us who we are but it is our choices thank you and have a wonderful day